So the players for this men's doubles encounter shake each other's hands. It has become traditional at most sporting events. Taiyun and Lu Kai of China against Kenichi Hawakawa and Hiroyuki Endo. There is Hiroyuki Endo. He'll turn 29 next month from Saitama in the suburbs of Tokyo. His partner already 29 years of age. They're currently number six in the world ranking. They have been as high as two. A total of six weeks as number two in the world. And that was last year. Number three on the Super Series list at the moment. And their win-loss record for the year, 14 tournaments. And they've been in five semi-finals. Three of those five semi-finals in Super Series events. And of course the World Championships as well, where they won the bronze medal. So their opponents, there is the tall man, Lu Kai, 191. That's just over six foot three. Turned 23 last month from Nanning in southern China. His partner, well, he's 35 from Suzhou in Jiangsu province. And, of course, he is half of probably one of the most famous men's doubles partnerships in the sport of badminton because with Fu Haifeng, won everything apart from this China Open. There we can see this will be the second meeting between these two pairs. First time they met was in the first round of this year's Singapore Super Series, which for the Chinese pair was a disappointment because they were the defending champions in Singapore, having won the Singapore Super Series title of 2014. So only eight tournaments this year for Taiyun and Lu Kai as a partnership did win the Swiss Grand Prix gold in Basel. Semi-finalists at the Asian Championships. But this is only their second Super Series, second round of the year. They reached the second round in Japan, where they lost the eventual champions, Lee Yong Dae and Yu Young Sung. The Chinese coaching bench, Zhang Jun. And I think that was Chen Chi Chu, wasn't it? Yeah, I think you're yeah. right. Oh, there, Japanese coach, Rio Nimanaki. Ladies and gentlemen, on my right, Chai Yun and Liu Kai, China. And on my left, Hiroyuki Endo and Kenichi Hayakawa, Japan. Kenichi Hayakawa to talk to Chai Yun, love or play. Oh. One love. Well, one wonders how much longer we'll have the pleasure of watching Chai Yun reached the final of the China Open in 2006. Lost out to Marcus Kido and Hindra Setia won in that final. And it seems astonishing, Steve. We alluded to it one earlier, didn't we, off. about uh, Taiyun and Fu Haifeng 
for all they achieved, yeah. Olympic medals, world titles, All uh, England titles, never. I, I, I must say, open. I'm almost shocked. I, I would never have guessed that. Yeah. Uh, if there were a question with uh, how many China Open did they win, did they win zero, two, four, or six, I would guess more likely four uh, or six. Than yeah. I would never have guessed they'd never won it. Well, we're talking earlier in the day, weren't we, about the psychology of sport. And I, I wonder if that came into it at all, such expectations all yeah. the years that they were world number one as a pair. I wonder, in, in a way, if that also... Came second in, in the, the Olympics. In Beijing. I was yeah. just about to talk about that and whether that was an influence playing yeah. on, on home soil. But I do like the way that China Babington has split up Tai Yun and Fu Haifeng and said, right, OK, want both of you to bring on younger players. Yeah. Oh, that's a good rally, isn't it? Yeah, and, and, and Fu Haifeng, you know, Zhang Nan is not so young. and uh, Yeah, he's still young, but he's, he's not uh, sort of um, unexperienced. He's mm. also an Olympic champion, but... Um, they really formed a formidable partnership there, and in my opinion, the best Chinese men's doubles right now. Yeah, four Super Series tournament finals this yeah. year for Fu Haifeng and Jiang Nan. All England, Singapore, Indonesia, Japan. But sadly, had to withdraw from oh. this event. They did? Yeah, number three seeds, and they withdrew before the tournament began. Oh. So they gave a walkover to Hashimoto and Hidrata. Rally. Yeah. Well, he always was superb at the net, so you there. Look at that little hold and flick deep into that forehand corner. Uh. Smash of rackets. Yeah, smash yeah. racket. That's, That's really <laughs> hard to, to return with a broken racket. Yeah. Not just a simple string. Take a look at this. Look at it. Oh, my goodness. There's no hope yeah. of playing the next shot. Yeah. That won't see another day. Lovely defence, isn't it? Just guiding it yeah. flat yeah. over the net.
nice change of pace. Yeah, great rally. Oh, that was, that was going out. Good rally. Oh, that's brilliant. What a oh. super shot from Lukai. Very, very steep shot. Mm. Chinese pair were quarter finalists here last year. Lost to the then world champions, Go Sun Hyung and Shin Bek Chol in three games. It's interesting to see what's going to happen in, in the future with uh, this men's doubles here with uh, Liu Kai. Who is he going to play with? Is he going to play play on with Chai Yun or, or switch completely to Liu Cheng who is played with in um, Denmark Premier? Mm. And, uh, was it Australia Open where they Reached went on the to final. the final? Reached the final, yeah. yeah. And it's interesting because Lukai's role is, is different in, in two combinations. Here he's, it's better for the pair if he's on the baseline, but uh, playing with Liu Cheng, he plays a very, very good um, net player or primarily a net player role there. Yeah. One of the uh, reasons to continue this constellation here could be if uh, Liu Cheng is uh, Focusing on the mixed doubles for the uh, Rio Olympics, of course, in yeah. tough competition with two other Chinese pairings. Yeah, one of the Chinese pairings is this man again, isn't it? With Wang Yaxiong. Yeah. Of course, Xu Chen and Ma Jin is the obvious other pair. All vying for those two Olympic places. Defending champions, I think, without question, barring injury. Yeah, they're, they're more or less given. Yeah. Yeah, that's a beautiful placement. Nice way to draw back level. That's lovely. Well played by Endo. And he just doesn't have the speed he once did. Serve. Oh, oh my goodness. So it's over. Nine, when you ten. see him play shots like that, it's very easy to understand why he's the reigning Olympic champion, four time world champion, six world championship medals. Ten all. Ten all. Oh, yeah, 
Yes. Big gap between the two Chinese players. And the advantage, albeit just one solitary point, is with the Japanese pair here at the mid-game interval. Yeah, and a, a bit of a strange um, first game mm. so far. It, I feel like both pairs actually have um, more to give. Mm. Coming down from like three and a half meters <laughs> there. A jump and uh, an arm and a racket and 191. That's 3.5 meters, mm. more or less. Good attacking play by the Japanese yeah. pair. And I, I really like to see the last two smashes, which were steeper and softer yeah. than we normally see the Japanese, who are just firing away with hard smashes. But this was clever smashes. In fact, I think during the All England final, their first one in 2013, of course, they were in two consecutive All England finals, Japanese pair. I can remember talking about the fact that they just played at 100 miles an hour the whole yeah. time. So you're right, they have developed their game and they're using these slower, steeper smashes, uh, a few drop shots occasionally in recent tournaments. I've seen them play. And, and got rewarded at the Worlds with yeah. a um, bronze medal. I yeah. I'm not sure, but uh, I guess you know that, Jill, that it must be the first um, men's doubles medal for Japan I at the Worlds. It was indeed. Yeah. No, it wasn't. It was it the second. Wasn't. It was the second, yeah, that's 2007, right. 2007, right. Sakamoto and Ikeda. Yeah. It was the first men's singles medal at the Former Mota. Former Mota. Who has just lost against <laughs> someone Ho or Korea in the men's singles. Strong second round match. Yeah. No way that was going to come back. Yeah. It's an interesting Japanese pair, though, isn't it, Steen? I mean, six Super Series tournament finals, not one title. Yeah. It, I mean, they, they get so close so often. You know, what did I say? Three Super Series semifinals already this year, five semifinals in total, if you include the German Grand Prix gold and the World Championships as well. So they're always there or thereabouts. Yeah. It, it's, I don't know exactly what it is, but I, I feel that they don't have, um, they don't have exactly that one thing that they're better at than anyone else. I mean, mm. um, uh, Asan and uh, Sechuan are better in the service situation than anyone else. Mm. The Koreans are better in the defense than anyone else. And, and Fu Haifang, um, Jiang Nan. I'm not sure they're better than anyone else, but perhaps number two yeah. after each of the two other pairs. So, uh, good running. Oh, oh, it's called out. Yeah. Yeah, well left. Yeah, I know what you mean because yeah, to to win titles at this level, there's got to be something special. That's great judgment and good cool line judge. Yeah, something special because when you when you move to up to the semifinals, then mm. then you play pairs that has some top skill either in the attack, in the defense, in the service situation, in the tactical game, whatever mm. it is. Yeah. Far exchange. Well, just to emphasize the point that we've been making, 
Kenichi Hawakawa and Hiroyuki Endo. They've been in 13 tournaments since they've been playing together. They've only won three of them. The last title that they won was July 2012 at the US Grand Prix Gold. And they've played in seven finals since. Uh, and the US Grand Prix Gold is a considerably lower tier than, than the Super Series. Absolutely. Not, not because it's in US or, or because it's no, a Grand Prix Gold, but it's played in during the summer where mm. a lot of the stronger pairings are, are preparing for the world. Yeah. Oh, yes, that was a yep. nice chat. And again, this is how they've developed their games. Yeah, yep, brilliant. Excellent play. Yeah. Just the, the favourite um, position for the Japanese pairing with uh, Endo working at the back court, having the role of a playmaker, making all kinds of different shots mm. without making mistakes, but sort of uh, trying to set it up for his uh, partner Hayakawa th at the front court they've been in control all this first game and one Hayakawa Right into the deep corner. Well played. Yeah. There we saw some of the skills at the front court from uh, from Lukai. He's been flicking a lot, yeah. uh, Chayun. I like that. I mean, yeah. if you have a good flick serve. And, and a reasonable defense. I mean, there's no point in, in, in just serving short services all the time. Yeah, that's a very, very good rally altogether from the Chinese pair. Oh, that's a good defense. Yeah. 
Good reactions by the Japanese players. And the lad has earned them three game point opportunities. Goodness, good angled smash. <laughs> oh, you're right about the height that that must be coming down from. Lou Kai's racket is another wonderful example. Done well uh, early stages of that one rally, Lung Kai. minutes of play. <laughs> coach having a bit of a, a drink there. Yeah. Thirsty work, yeah. this coaching. <laughs> All right, players. Let me just carry on, boys. But I like that. The, the, now we won the first game, so no need to rush it here. We've got two minutes. And yeah. Things are actually going according to plan. Yeah. You're right, though. You, I always got the sense that. The Japanese were just a little bit better in that. I think yeah, they, they came a little bit close um, in the end, um, Chayun and uh, Lukai, but um, they never really challenged. I think one of the keys for the Japanese pair to become even stronger in, in terms of super serious achievements is to to um, become better in their opposite roles that Endo must become a little bit better at the net and mm. Hayakawa must become a little bit better uh, from the back court yeah. so that they can survive these situations where their opponents have them changed around. Uh, Second game. The defense nowadays is so good that you won't always be able to have your preferred um, position. Yeah. Oh, yes. There's the favoured formation. That's delightful, I like that. Oh, there's the change of pace, and then the power. And change of pace again. Yeah, well worked, Riley. The continuing the second game where they left in the first. 
dominating more of the rallies. Racket is broke. Yeah. Or what? No? It didn't certainly didn't sound right, did it? Huh? Oh, it's not going off to I change his racket. Maybe it was just the noise of the cork of the shuttle yeah. hitting the top of the tape. Oh! Something sounded odd though, didn't it? Yeah, it's a fault because Two, he touched it. Three. Well, looks up Two. at the lights. Certainly in the matches we've seen him with Lu Cheng. That's what he's been doing an awful lot, those interceptions at the net. Yeah, but uh, and he, he gets a little bit better working conditions when he plays with Liu Cheng because he's a much harder hitter from the base, uh, uh, from the backcourt than, than uh, Chai Yun. That so is delightful. Uh, I'm pretty sure that th the, the combination of Lu Kai and, and Liu Cheng is actually now stronger than the combination that we're, we're yeah. seeing on court here. It's just a matter of uh, whether uh, you can divide Liu Cheng's attention between two categories. Lu Kai, of course, also playing mixed doubles with uh, Huang Ya Chong. Ah! there did he think it was going to go long at the back line yeah. he didn't but seemed to be half-hearted the way he hit that oh. well played. yeah so it's over. it seems that Three. when the Japanese pair put pressure on Chai Yun at the back court then uh, they're in trouble, Chayun and Lukai. Oh, what a backhand there Eight, from three. Endo.
Yeah. It's a good, good attack. Yeah. No chance for Lou or Chai to turn it around. So a seven point advantage at the big game interval to the number five seeds Hiroyuki Endo and Kenichi Hawakawa. Good at the moment, don't they? Look as if they're in command. I mean, it seems extraordinary that I'm about to say what I'm going to say, but it seems to me that Tai Yuan is a bit of a weak link. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. I don't know whether he's affected by this stocking he's wearing on his left foot. We see a number of players wearing stockings, and mm. it's just impossible to tell whether they're nursing some small injury or not. But um, I think he is, because I've noticed over the last eight months or so, he always wears a bandage around that. Yeah. And I didn't know whether it was calf muscle or whether it was a problem with the Achilles or quite what it was, but I think it's sort of a prevention of further injury. Yeah. There's no real bite in that smash. No. through in the end. Yeah. Yeah, there's a canter at the moment, the Japanese pair. about the second Chinese coach Jill. I don't think it's Chen Chi. No. I think but I think he played men's doubles with him, but I've forgotten his name. <laughs> if only we had the internet working up here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's good. That is a thunderous smash. And Six, as you were saying 15. earlier, Steen, it's the angle which he comes down from. Remarkable shot. Tricky service return there mm. from uh, Chayun. No, that wasn't too shabby either. If he's in the right position, he's still got the skills, he's still got the imagination. And it's just if his movement, if his 
made to change direction or slightly out of position. Great judgment, just wide. Yeah, another tricky return of serve, going to the same place. That's yeah. well played. It's a little late that they've sort of discovered this game here. Yeah. But it's interesting, it, it's Liu Kai. You talked about it earlier, about how with uh, Liu Cheng, he's able to come forward. And, yeah. and in these latter stages of this match, he's coming forward and it's making a big difference. Yeah. Goodness. It's wide. No. Oh, it is wide. Yeah, it's called wide. So it's over. 18, nine. So it was wide all the way until it touched the floor. Then I suddenly mm. changed my mind. Time. Yeah. Are they a little bit high the serves of uh, Hayakawa? I think we've seen some service returns that have been a little bit too good. I mean, that's a sign that he's perhaps not serving totally accurate. Not tight enough over the tape. Yeah. Mm. Well, during the Sudaman Cup, we saw him called for a fault on numerous occasions, yeah. didn't we? And we've seen at tournaments since, and both you and I have talked about it. And I wonder whether he's uh, now taken his service down lower, his service action, yeah. and whether he's just finding the rhythm still on that. That might that's well be th that's the case. That's yeah. yeah. That is brilliant. What a shot from Taiyun. You're right, oh. it's not Chen Shi Chu, I don't think. On coach's bench. No. Long. Yeah, gone long. And so match points have arrived. efficient yeah what an extraordinary return of serve look at this Here it is. Ah. Yeah. <laughs> fabulous oh the low Eight. serve is short 
and therefore the match 21 18 21 13 in favor of the number five seeds Kenichi Hawakawa and Hiroyuki Endo 41 minutes for their victory Confirmation of the score and Endo and Hawakawa are through to the quarterfinal where they will meet either Muhammad Hassan and Hendra Setiawan or Wang Ilu and Zhang Wen. Just one more match to come this afternoon and we turn our attention now to women's doubles and this should be an excellent encounter because it's the world championship silver medalist from Denmark against the world championship the bronze medalist from Japan so Christina Pedersen and Camilla Rudy, the number three seeds from Denmark up against uh, Naoko Fukuman and Kurumi Yo now. So as far as the destination Dubai Super Series rankings are concerned, top six remain the same after the French the Super the Series. Uh, the other four all changed positions. Up one place, Chae and Kim from Korea. Up three places, the second Korean pair there. But the extraordinary thing is only four pairs in the top ten have won a Super Series title this year. In other words, six titles so far this year going to pairs outside the top ten of the destination Dubai rankings. Second round match. Number three seeds Christina Peterson and Camilla Rutiu. Much taller than their opponents. The now call Fukuman and Kurumi Yonao. So, as far as this Japanese pair are concerned, at the start of today, they were number 12 in the world ranking. But Steen Peterson has just noticed that the world rankings have been republished. And they've gone down one place, gone down one place to number 13 from their career high of 12. Making their first appearance here at the China Open, a Japanese pair. Fukuman, 23 years of age. Yo now won't turn 23 until next month. There they are, 13 in the world ranking. And 19 and 16 reached the final of the Malaysian Grand Prix Gold, where they lost to their opponents of today in the final. They beat Juala Gutta and Ashwini Ponopa in the very first round. 21-16, 21-11 in 34 minutes. So to the Danish combination and the tall left-hander, Camilla Rutiul, will turn 32 later this month. There is Christina Peterson, 29. 
She's been in a couple of finals here in the mixed doubles with York and Fisher. 2011 and 2013, but with her women's doubles partner, there she is, Camilla Rutio. They have been in three consecutive quarterfinals here at the China Open, trying to make it four in a row. They've been in four finals this year from 13 tournaments. Won the Malaysian Grand Prix gold, obviously, and the German Grand Prix gold, and then were beaten in the final of the World Championships and the Japan Super Series. So this is the fourth meeting between the two pairs. Not only have the Danes won all three previous encounters, they've won them all in two straight games. And all of those three previous encounters